Should we um, stick with this? Let's do it. We're so back. That's what it feels like. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Thank you for coming back to the It's a Vibe podcast. Episode uh, Let's six. Let's not say episode names, I feel not. Because if we want to change order, I think... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, let, fair let's enough. Let's just give it some enough. flexibility. All right, all right. We're back. We're back, baby. Yeah. We're back for another episode. Episode number, see the title for that. Good one. Anyways, what's up, bro? Like, uh, I'm kind of stressed out about the volume of this mic right now. So my mind is there. You think it's too loud? I think my mic is a little too loud. So um, it's okay. I mean, you can always reduce the volume, but you, you know, can. if it's too loud, but you can't uh, increase it. Right? You can. You can actually increase it. I feel increasing. I, I'm. I don't know too much about this, but I feel if you. Increase I'm happy with a louder volume than a lower volume. No, I don't want it to be too loud where it starts cracking. But then you can always lower the volume. I feel if it's if it goes above a threshold, you can't lower it. You can't fix it. I don't think, I don't think it's crazy again. loud. Or maybe talk a little bit away from the mic. I'm trying, yeah. Like, so that's is pretty this, solid. Is this good? Like, it doesn't even matter if I ask if this is good because... Drop it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, tell me next time. So, anyway, anyway. Um, uh, one thing's changed. I see you've got a fresh cut. Yes. Looking good. Thank you. You actually think so? You've got Shah Rukh Khan vibes, I feel I like. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm going to show you something on my phone, okay? Show I, me. I went to the... Why do you have two phones, by the way? We'll get to that. Uh, shit, okay, it's gone. I, I had two it. phones when I was at B of A, but one was like a corporate phone, which is only like corporate stuff, and yeah. now is... Uh, no, um, it's a very stupid reason why I have two phones, and um, I'll get into it. Let me tell you the Shah Rukh Khan story. I was going to show you my history. Like, actually, I'll show you my history because I just deleted that. Not tab. your search history, right? <laughs> yeah, my search history. You're, you're going to see it all. But, dude, of course, I use incognito. <laughs> what am I? No. An animal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Shah Rukh Khan and Neil Caffrey hai. Shah Rukh Khan hai, Neil Caffrey hai. Bro, you know, you know I show? Uh, Zayn Malik. Oh, you have that. <laughs> okay, you know, I actually was When thinking. I do the shortcut, like the bus cut, I've started doing it the last you few months. You only do that, I feel. I've yeah, never seen you with long hair in but, my whole life. But now I think I want to grow it out a little bit. How I long? just feel like I keep doing the just a little curly, frizzy, I guess. How how does your hair get? Is it like an afro? Is it, it gets pretty curly. I feel it's thick. Yeah, it's thick hair. Can I touch it? Vamos, yeah. Yeah, you have, you have good I've hair. I've been blessed with some I, thick hair. white hair, yeah. Yeah, I also have gold hair, like... Where? Uh, I don't know, bro. Okay, never mind. Oh, I, I, I was, <laughs> I was born with it. Like it's a patch of gold hair, and oh, like yeah. whenever if you cut it, it grows back. Oh, so that gold hair, it's just one small patch. One small patch. Yeah. It, that's pretty cool. I think it is pretty cool. I think it's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah. So when I was at the barber shop getting my uh, haircut done, I. I, I showed him these pictures and firstly this guy didn't even know English and he kept saying oh yeah yeah he seemed very caffeinated okay he was on his probably fourth um, coke can of the day it looked like and he was like yeah 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 I do I do I can't, yeah 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 I'm like uh, yeah you're free now he's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I said okay come then I show him the picture of Shah Rukh Khan and Neil Caffrey and he's like oh okay who's okay, Neil Caffrey a white collar you've not seen white collar is, I, 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 I know of the show is he like the main character the main guy Matt Bomer okay the main guy like insane hair like I, I've always wanted his hair okay um, I just realized it's very tough to maintain in real life fair enough another thing Johan and I always do if we see a guy with like a good ha- head of hair we'll be like that's a good head of hair but you have good hair I, Johan I, I do, is I do. like not genetically blessed with touchy topic <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> we sorry. can't put it on a <laughs> <Sorry>. podcast <laughs> 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 You no. it wasn't me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Please. that's only because you've said it. Otherwise, I never really noticed it. Anyway, let's, anyway, let's move good. on. <laughs> Back to my haircut story, right? And I was sitting there and I was actually thinking of you when I was getting my haircut. Oh. In the sense that, because I was thinking, dude, why do you not get good haircuts? Because we, this is just before we're shooting this. And then I, I showed him my style and he like, don't worry, don't worry. He barely knew English. And then he went so short on the side. If you see the previous episode, my hair was like way longer. Maybe I just obsess about it more. It's fair. You're actually the second guy who's told me that I, I need to get good haircuts or different haircuts because someone in Bombay, like a good friend of mine, you said no name, so I'm not naming. I mean, uh, if you don't care, I don't care. If it's something it's not this, I don't care. Okay, whatever. Uh, if you want to shout him out. UV? <laughs> shout out UV, baby. <laughs> UV said I need to get more of like an unorthodox, unorthodox haircut. He said because it's too like sida sada always. It's like the same yeah, cut all good the time. Boy, you know? Yeah, he's like, you got to change it up, you know, like, different but i'm like i am a good boy right i feel no, like you're so not a good boy <laughs> like, that's why i think you need to get the bad boy haircut so people are like oh shit okay you're badass fair enough fair enough so i called him last time when i was really? getting a haircut at uh, <laughs> at cci 
Dude, that's your problem. And you then I call- a haircut at CCI. <laughs> no shit, you're gonna get this. So I called him after, and then he's like, "No, no, go back. Let me speak to the barber." So then him and his buddy F Anirud were both speaking to the barber and being like, "Nay, aisa karo, aisa karo." So is this the bad boy haircut? Well, it's been like a month since I got it cut. So it was, it was really short. It was very, very short. Yeah. No, it's let let this grow out for maybe the next three months. I was thinking of like an year. eyebrow slit, but then he's like, "No, no, too much." I think that's a bit much. Yeah, I think you start with the hair, okay? Fair enough. No, but so let me say. Anyway, yeah. So on, then sorry. I was uh, getting my haircut done, and then he just started cutting so much, and I'm like, "You ever get that? Fe- you don't get that. That's why I was saying. I don't think you get that feeling, but anyone here, if you get that feeling, you know, when the barber is being just overcut, cutting. but it's quite long. Like you still got that Devan on puff. How do you even know what Devanand is? Because I used to have this this hair back in the day, like really? this puff. And my mom used to be like, "You look like Devanand." <laughs> he's like a South Indian actor. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's a he's a big actor. Like Rajnikanth types. I don't know, bro. I, like Rajnikanth is huge, but Devanand was oh, a different that type. big. I don't know. Okay, now. anyway, anyway, I don't yeah, 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 know, bro. Yeah. Like, they're not. Uh, anyway, so then I just I was just sitting there smiling. You know the feeling when the barber's fucking your hair, and you just know that it's. It's getting messed up, and you just have you just have to smile, and then by the yeah, end, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm crying on the inside, and then uh, afterwards, and he kept saying, "Don't worry, don't worry." He barely knew English, and, and I don't know why I trusted him. And then at the end of it, he did stuff, and like he he didn't style it like this. He styled it much worse. I came home and showered, and at the end of it, I told him, "Dude, like, uh, uh it's um, it's too short. I want it long." Uh, long, long. He's like, oh, long, long. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> and he puts the thing back on the apron, back on me. And he tries to start cutting my hair. I'm like, no, 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 no. Long, long. Yeah, yeah. Stop, side. I said, no. I want it long. You can't cut it. And You're like, just <laughs> stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, he thought I, I, I said it's too long. I want it shorter. How much was your your haircut? Free. Fuck off. I, I'm not even kidding. Like it was forty bucks. And then I, I was obviously I wasn't rude to him. And then I told him how much. <laughs> And then he said forty. Then I said okay. Then we go to the counter, and then he just says, "Oh yeah, it's not working. Come tomorrow." But I don't know. You're not going I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad. But the thing is, he told me he's forty-five years old, and he has two kids, kids one fifteen yeah. and seventy. I just don't have the heart in me to just tell him. Anything and he's probably back. like migrated from somewhere. It yeah, from like Turkey. His, his kids are in Turkey. No, um, my guy was Uzbek. <laughs> oh, your guy was Uz- from. Oh, yes. No, no. When I was in Mare, <laughs> when I was in Mare Hill, I went to like. 38th and 2nd 38 was my bar. anyway okay so uh, it was down the road for you yeah. we also don't give addresses here but that's a barber so okay anyway, yeah, yeah fair enough shout sorry. out to <laughs> barber I mean what sorry Eddie <laughs> <laughs> shout him out to <laughs> so yeah anyway. that was my uh, barber story where do you get your haircut in Bombay uh, oh, I, dude can I say something sure <laughs> <laughs> on my last flight to Bombay something absurd happened okay Normally, I never talk to people on on the flight, okay? Ooh. But like this this lady was sitting next to me. She was must have been twenty five, thirty years old, and uh, we were chatting, chatting. She said her fiance lives in Bombay or something. She was gonna visit her fiance. She's half New York, half Bombay, and then we were chatting, chatting, and then I was. She saw my hoodie, and obviously I was no. repping my boy. I okay. survived, right? And I think she was a psychologist, if I'm not wrong. And she and she said, "Oh, cool hoodie or something like that." I was like, "No, you know, my friend's an actor. He's trying to he's trying to make it, and uh, this is his brand, and I enjoy wearing the clothes and whatnot. And he's my boy." And she's like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> is his name like Isa Abraham?" There's there's no. And way. I was like, "Yeah." And she's like, "You know what? When I was opening up my psychology studio in in New York, I was looking for someone to." Uh, to model for it, and I reached out to him, and we were supposed to do it. But it, Gaia, y- I mean, a shout out, guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. No, South Asian yeah, psychology. Yeah, yeah. that's actually <laughs> you made it, baby. <laughs> that's actually mad, dude. It's pretty crazy. That's actually a crazy story. She was sitting next to me on the flight, and she said she just set it up, and like I was like, yeah. Holy shit! He's my boy. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, like flexing, like I know Ranbir. <laughs> okay, so speaking of that, the craziest thing happened to me like three weeks ago. I was um, out at night with. Um, <laughs> this, this sounds so wrong. I was I was with my boy. Uh, shout out Addu. I, th- I think we can say his name. Yeah. And basically, we were at this place and. There's this girl who just kept looking at me, okay, and I, I was just like, okay, whatever. 
and then she kept looking and and then i'm like dude why is she staring she's she's with a guy too you know she's like hugging her guy why not bro i mean look at you <laughs> <laughs> that's a pre haircut uh then and then again then you know then she just uh then whatever like 10 minutes later i'm somewhere else and then someone taps me on my shoulder and she comes to me she's like do you make youtube videos <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> what i didn't hear you say it again i want to make sure i heard this right Excellent. and she's like are you a youtuber i said i guess so now now i am like now now today right, right now, now this is i become one. i become a youtuber because you noticed me so shout out um, you know who you are it's pretty solid bro it's a good feeling i'm sure yeah, right yeah but i i think i handled it well was it your first fan moment first first ever and i was like wow dude i feel I the thing is I appreciate it a little bit. I appreciate it and I've always noticed the people that I look up to and I'm like uh, how are they dealing with their fans? And I always want I I just specifically went to Connecticut like a week before that to meet some other YouTubers, Jeff and Mike that I and Low Gangs people. Yeah, Low Gangs people who you were just watching on TV. And I saw the way they treated the way they you know and I met You think it's an act or like genuine it's tough to tell right I think it's a mix of both yeah. you are genuine but you can't always be that genuine but you have to get that genuine side of you and dial the volume up you know uh, especially I feel a lot of times these celebrities people say oh this person is so bad I went and asked him for a picture asked her for a picture and she said no but do like they always I get the it limelight. also in India especially like if you're a Bollywood actor I feel like more so than being a Hollywood actor here I I feel like in India those guys are actually like deified. They're like, you know, if like people see them on the street or people see them anywhere, it's like they've seen like yeah, you know. Have you ever seen anyone? I <laughs> like a Bollywood actor? Yeah, maybe you must have seen it not even known. I I wouldn't put that past you. Uh I saw Tismar Khan once. <laughs> <laughs> I know why this is good. And uh Katrina Kaif and Akshay Kumar were actually in the audience because it was the premiere. Yeah. and uh, i think farah khan was hosting it okay. and yeah 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 my gal shout out farah yeah did you meet <laughs> yeah, far- my mom put you in touch with yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cuz yeah. my mom i think delivered her kids her triplets like way back a while ago yeah that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. so that that was far yeah, your your brother in boston in boston she came to boston and to my college and then i just met her for breakfast one day so it was kind of nice johan put me in touch with, with shout, out. shout out <laughs> shout out shout <laughs> out the whole pandols <laughs> So yeah that w- that's the only encounter no, no one here in America mm. Bollywood in America No 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 yeah Hollywood I'm saying someone famous maybe even celebrity someone famous um Except for tennis player I don't think cuz that doesn't really count cuz you're not starstruck by them you know No I I don't feel like I'm starstruck by Same. celebrities even I don't though. think I'm starstruck the only person I'll be starstruck by is The Rock Fair enough yeah Cuz like I I love He's crazy charismatic though as well Yeah He's he he's like an aura. You know, he's like not human. He's got that like when he speaks everyone just listens. Did you see the video of him on uh you're not on Instagram so shit. But the video where uh, No, no, carry on. No, basically it's a video of him surprising this one UFC fighter who just he d- didn't have any money. He was staying in his gym and whatever money he had he sent it back to his village for like a uh, sanitation and some shit you know something to give back to the village and he like i'm not taking any of this money for myself i live in the gym and i'll fight in the ufc and the rock surprised him gave him his own house gave him money gave him a car he seems like a genuinely good dude, dude. as well like kind of like john cena as well both of them yeah. seem like it's tough to really bullshit that but i i really look up to these two john cena and the rock yeah. and like i Fair always enough. like people say oh yeah they're fake and all uh, fake in the sense that oh they're Wrestling. It's wrestling. It's not a real sport. But dude, like the people that they are are just yeah, and they've worked their top. asses off to get yeah, to where they are. Yeah, and yeah. now Cena is also making it in Hollywood. He's right? making it big, fast and furious. He's done. He's he a good-looking been... dude as well, and he's jacked, and he's great on the mic. He's got it all. And you know, um, did I tell you the story, sir? Huh, sir. Go ahead. Did I tell you about the story that um, Cena always talks about, and it's like stuck with me? Okay, I'll tell you the story, and then I feel I let you talk a little bit because no, 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 like carry on. <laughs> because this is actually something which is so close to my heart. um cena was talking john cena was um talking about this in some interview and he said that when he first came to the wwe he was not that good he was a big dude he was cut everything but he wasn't really charismatic he didn't have that it factor right at least 
back then no one knew he had it and um, <clears throat> and then uh, he, when his contract was about to end there were no talks about renegotiating nothing so that's when you know you know a month before you know that okay if they're not even talking about renegotiating they're letting you go so he was saying he knew he was going to be let go off and then what they were traveling and one one of the days close to his on the take off comes up to him no no no, no. that that was on tv the sort okay, backstage fine, no. and he um they were all on a bus okay and people like ray mysterio and all yeah, these yeah. top athletes were on the bus all the ogs ogs you know who we've grown up watching yeah. um and the they just started they were having fun you know on the bus you are like when you're going with your team you're having fun playing music and then one person started rapping you know freestyling and he freestyled one two lines and everyone thought wow and sina got up and he started freestyling and the thing is he always had this freestyle thing he always used to love it but he it was he never showed it to anyone and he did it and stephanie mcmahon was in the bus and then after steph saw that uh they got off the bus and steph called sina and says come here the thing you just did there can you do that again he's like yeah then she said okay next week let's try that let's add this to your persona cuz there's nothing to lose he's like sure he went and did it and the audience started that's pretty cool yeah the audience started yeah. uh you know vibing with it they, he's like this white boy from boston who like no one will expect is, is and a, he's got uh, like bars like he's good he's good but you know what he said even though he's good so he realized oh he, he finally started connecting with the audience yeah. right no matter how good you are if you don't connect with the audience on one thing then he got the thugonomics brand and all slowly, that yeah, yeah. hustle loyalty so respect so then he realized shit this is working so he worked his ass off he would sit lock himself in these rooms and he would write bars like try to perfect it his work ethic as well is on roll yes his work ethic and also shout out to stephanie mcmahon like she's been Catch great it. for the show as well like when she comes on she has like great skits kind of like vicky guerrero in a way <laughs> great heels uh you remember the song the rock sign of course i was thinking about I that i was listening to it the other day hilarious i love it anyway should we move on from wwe for cuz i feel like our audience is can i just say the uh, end the please, thing please of yeah, course yeah please. okay <laughs> it, it's just uh, i'm just tying it back to myself we move on from wwe um yeah so then <laughs> he started connecting with the audience and then um and then he realized he started working harder and harder and then he made that his brand and he always said you know he found just one thing to connect with the audience and he stuck with that and that's what i'm trying to do right now i'm just trying to find one thing and which was obviously genuine to him that's not fake cuz that's sustainable so the sec- like you know when i find that one thing i'm going to stick with that's it that's interesting and, and he st- and he stuck with it as well cuz even yeah. his to this day his entry Sometimes. song is also his uh, his own song yeah, yeah. His own song. so the way i look at it is if you're climbing a mountain and there's this one rope that's coming you hold that rope and you that's the connection rope and then that's one rope that takes you all the way to the top someone like, told you that you didn't come up I with that i swear There's to no god bro, i swear to god bro like my mind thinks like this my mom was also shocked seeing the first couple episodes she's like isa's quoting malcolm gadwell he's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's giving analogies about ego and <laughs> people don't know this side of me she's like you're well read <laughs> people i'm telling you people don't know this side of me and i'm like starting to embrace it now but i'm still an idiot fair enough fair anyways enough. moving on um you said you had gas <laughs> <laughs> where did it match it up said i'll edit podcast you know that all right fair enough yeah i mean when i eat chickpeas bro chickpeas no one knows that you know <laughs> no but uh, I, I, we started off saying we'll kind of talk more about diet in this episode yeah you yeah you want to do that I mean yeah we can my Unless diet is basically eat as healthy as I can and as much as I can and it started from from Bombay I suppose when I was like training really hard and now I feel like my metabolism is pretty high as well cuz even though I'm not training 4 5 6 hours a day it's still uh, yeah but it's something I believe in honestly it's something that I feel like you I was always pretty much I feel like in shape or like athletically inclined cuz I was competing but you I feel like after your 10th or 11th grade you really uh You went from the chubby chubby kid cuz that's where my first recollection of you. Then you became pretty like jacked after you went to Germany I remember, right? And pretty fit. After going so, to college I started actually getting jacked. But Germany kind of I lost the fat. Yeah, you lost the fat, correct? And then So there's this hilarious story uh which oh, Yo- I know, I know. <laughs> which Johan and I always <laughs> even to this day crack up on cuz neither of us were there for this. Uh cuz it was on sports day. I don't know. Okay, you know where I'm going with this. I know exactly. It was on sports day maybe 10th grade and I, the, the funny thing is 
I was never allowed for sports day. And I don't think my brother was allowed either. What do you mean you weren't allowed? My mom thought it was a waste of time. So heats and sports day, she'd no. be like, you guys aren't going. Like, y'all can use this time to study when everyone else is like <laughs> running around the track. So what excuse did you guys give to school? Sick. Every um, year, every on sports. And my mom was the doctor, bro. Every year, on <laughs> she sports. Just signed, yeah, sorry, both my kids are sick. <laughs> she gives zero. <laughs> That's actually insane. Anyway, I didn't realize y'all won there. Yeah. yeah, I was never there for sports day. But never, she was there. Never allowed. She was always there. She was the doctor, right? Okay, for yeah, for sports day. <laughs> and she came home that one day and was like, "Boys, like, <laughs> there was a fifteen hundred meter race apparently. Okay, for the audience watching, and they would have it every year, in um, in sports day." And people were doing, were running around the track, running around the track, running around the track. Then a few minutes in, finally it ended, and people were starting to, you know, stand on the podium, receive their medals. That's and then someone's like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> we see something over there." And people were looking. <laughs> people were really looking, and like, "Oh yes!" And apparently someone was running like. <laughs> 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 I was my boy, the Eastonator, and everyone was like, Isa, Isa. And then apparently he finishes the race dead last by, by a good amount, and he takes his cap off and just chucks it, chucks it on the floor in frustration. And everyone was like stunned because you would think he came like second by like, you know, a millimeter. And Isa's excuse, I still remember to this day because Johan and I asked you about it. He said no, they were split into two groups. But they were. That's why I say I did <laughs> the not fast last. group <laughs> and the slow group. I went with the fast group. But clearly, you should not have been with <laughs> whoever was selecting. You. But this was pre pre losing the fat. You know? pre, yeah, you know what? I mean, as and much you blamed your nose thing. I, I mean, think. I could never breathe in my nose. <laughs> uh, you know what? Every excuse I, came I, on. I'm it. not going to make any excuses now because I, I'm just going to sound like an idiot trying to <laughs> say that all back then. But um, I'm sure if I do it now. Why do you have to throw your cap after? Like? I was pissed, bro, that I came. <laughs> like it took me so long to finish that. Front of the whole school. On <laughs> I didn't know people noticed that. Well, my mom noticed <laughs> that. I had no idea. I literally had no idea. And I, I was like panting. I remember after that. I'm like. <sighs> and I was on the floor. I thought I was going to pass out. And then I called my brother crying. I'm like, oh, it didn't go as I planned. It's but all good, but all. that also goes back to, you know, when we spoke about how, you know, when you work hard, when hard work. You know, there's hard work, people work hard, and people say they work hard, but they don't, and then there are people who know what hard work is. I used to always say I worked hard then because I thought I was working hard, but now I know that wasn't hard work. Do you think you, you're a hard worker now? I know you said at the start of 2023, I remember New Year's Eve, you were telling everyone, going 2023, dark. I am going dark. For me, I was telling him the first rule of going dark is that you, you're not telling people you're going dark. They'll, they'll probably know because you're dark. But anyway, do you... Do no, no, you I, and I'll tell you what. And then uh, someone asked me, so um, what's the point? That's so... They, this person was actually like, oh, that's so cool. Why are you going dark? Name drop? No name drop. No name drop, yeah. Why are you going dark? I said, I don't know. I guess so I can turn the light on in a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what were you saying before that? So do you think now... Would you say you're a hard worker? Would you say you're proud of your work ethic? Um, Obviously, you can get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'd say I am, and uh, but I'm always hard on myself. Before, I used to be the opposite, right? I would do a little bit, and I'd be complacent. And I'd go be have like, a okay. sandwich after. So eat a sandwich should be like you want it. Sure, sure. I, I guess. Yeah, I did. I would do something, and then I'd be like, okay, I burned it, so let me go and eat an ice cream sundae and a burger, yeah. you know. But now it's like. No, there's always more, there's always more. Even no matter what I do, I'm like, no, I can always do more. And I'm trying to balance it out, trying to be like, okay, you have to enjoy, smell the roses along the way, and also work hard, you know? You can't be on any extreme because then you're living, you're not really living life. I feel like the extremes are where you find, I don't know. What? I don't know, you find energy, you find life a little bit, you know, when you really push yourself to the extremes. But though. you're not always living on always the extreme. Living, you're not living I get on the it. extreme. I get it. I mean, there are people who There's do. There's a healthy balance. Do you think you live on the extreme? I, w I don't know. I, people definitely do think uh, sometimes I can be a bit extreme with, with, with certain things. Like but what? I don't know. I'm very like anal in my, in my preparation for things or like if I have something important coming out, like I can completely like cut off communication with with whoever not because of any reason i'm just so like uh tunnel vision on uh, on something sometimes but uh like i said i'm trying to find a healthy balance where i'm still uh trying to achieve all my goals but also doing it in a way that 
that's sustainable i suppose okay what are you doing to get in that sustainable way i don't know we spoke about where i still want that same focus that same intensity the same drive i guess to achieve things but i, I want to do it in a way where i'm not lost in focusing on the outcome like i said mm-hmm. which is why i'm trying to just embrace the process like even if i'm doing things that are difficult like just stay in the moment and like embrace embrace that a little bit you know like and like 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 we spoke about with 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 the meditation that's that's something that's really uh helped me along the way in that in that uh, that aspect yeah no i hear you i hear you um that that's pretty interesting because yeah like you said i think everyone would think that you are very focused and you're an like you would you call yourself an outlier in a lot of ways um I don't know if it's for me to call myself an outlier but I do think it's a compliment if someone yeah. says you're an outlier. Yeah. I mean I've always wanted to be an outlier. I I feel like life is too short to just sleepwalk through it, you mm-hmm. know? Like and I feel like too many people who who I've seen just show up to show up, you know, and I never want to show up to show up and that's kind of what I felt like um my last couple years at 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 BFA I was doing investment banking after graduating. Uh I think I was doing well. Uh I w- I was learning a good amount but I didn't wake up every morning and be like damn I I need to be the best analyst here like that hunger really I was kind of just showing up doing what I needed to do to to do well and that's when I knew that you know what like this probably isn't for me like I'm glad I've learned a lot I want to get the most out of it but I need to do something that really I feel like drives me that I feel like I can make an impact mm-hmm. you know yeah so you're still searching for that from what I understand yeah I'm searching that's why I'm in school right it. now I'm getting uh getting my education trying to take as many different uh top uh, subjects as I can learn as much as I can about different industries different areas and see what's what you know no oh, i absolutely love that yeah like you said i think people just show up to show up and um people a lot of people aren't living and that's life okay for them. if if yeah i agree i agree with i you. don't agree with that kind of living like yeah you agree with me pe- that people do it but i think dude it's one life it's really freaking short and we're so lucky to be here just do what you got to do dude. do what I you want to do I agree but and I do think I've I've fallen uh, fallen for that as well a lot of decisions I feel like I've made sometimes have been maybe to like please other people or like because I feel like it's what what I I genuinely have bro like more like for the people who are close to me I would say have you pleased me <laughs> I mean like maybe my parents maybe my brother parents, maybe, yeah. maybe like you but know but that's what family and loved I guess, ones are I guess you know so. you have to do that Yeah, I'm probably not doing it for anyone else, yeah. Yeah, I I get that. Dude, of course, if you're going to not do it for your, for your family and people who are close to you, you that you and you love, then uh, you can go and call yourself an animal. <laughs> the enough. king of the jungle, eh? The hey, king. fella. But uh yeah, speaking about the king of the jungle, how's my boy G2 doing? <laughs> do you have any <laughs> quotes of dude, everyone loving G2 quotes. So Who's everyone? You probably asked two people who've been like uh, name, no okay. name dropping here. <laughs> So I can name drop and I can get sued but you can't name drop. You don't name drop anyone. I name drop but I bleep it. Okay, fair. Let me let me think. Let me think of an OG quote. Also, we are hitting the 30 minute mark and okay, okay. about to I die. Okay, okay. I think so. I have it. I have it. <laughs> okay. So about like a couple weeks ago, we we did this new breathing practice, okay? Wim Hof? Uh, no, not Wim Hof. Okay. <laughs> and seesaw breathing? So after the breathing practice, Speak, no. Sorry. I was like Jitu so like today's practice I got to be honest I found very difficult He looks at me It's like Rian There is nothing like easy and difficult in this life I was like what do you mean so it was difficult It's like no There is only usual and unusual Today you are saying it was difficult because it was unusual you are not used to it you do it for the next week the next month the next year you get used to it it will be easy it will be usual and i was like that makes perfect sense you know if you create a habit out of something like waking up at 5 a.m is not difficult you're just not used to it right you do it every day for the next month i mean it's the easiest thing in the world right you it's usual it's familiar and that was pretty like eye opening to me like i mean running 100k for like goggins you know gog yeah. i mean that's not difficult for him i mean it's it's usual for him. he's he's used to it but for the rest of us i mean like we don't even know where to start because we've not even attempted to try it right 
So I thought that was a little bit of G2 wisdom coming G2 away. G2 wisdom, baby. This is a G2 <laughs> wisdom part. No, I absolutely love it. So the amazing. Uh, I've told him about the podcast, but like yeah. I've not told him how much. Don't, don't give him the link of the podcast yet. You know, every time it crosses 20 views, I get happy because of the first statement you made. But yeah, anyways, thanks for uh, coming back. Let's wrap up here. Yeah, thanks for coming back. It's been amazing. Always fun. And we'll see you at the next episode, right? Episode number 